Good morning, people of God, and welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. We have heard the bell ringing, calling us to worship. We are gathered and seeing red today, wearing red for the occasion. Maybe some of you are too. I can't really tell from this point of view. (laughs) Traditionally in the church, red is the color of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the presence and power of God at work to transform hearts and lives and communities from that first Pentecost day until today. So today is Pentecost, and we celebrate God's gift of the Holy Spirit. In St. Paul's wonderful description of the Christian community in 1 Corinthians, he says that in the one Spirit... We were all baptized into one body, and we were all given gifts by the Spirit for the common good. Inspired by the Spirit, filled with God's love, we are one body in Christ, one with many members, and I am grateful today to be worshiping with you before me as well as many of you in spirit behind me many of you wearing red in those pictures. It is wonderful today to have that sense of a great cloud of witnesses all around, and what a beautiful thing it is to see smiling faces. In the one spirit, we are one body in beautiful diversity, and there is room for you as well. So I think we'll be leaving these pictures up for a week or two. If you haven't sent in your photo yet and would like to do so, welcome. Special shout out and word of thanks to the Fodio family this morning, to uh, Quinn and her mother for coloring this coloring page, decoration for Pentecost, and Ella who filled in the fire of the Holy Spirit. We begin this morning with music for gathering. Still 
Come, Holy Spirit, inspire our hearts with your fiery presence. Let your flame burn within us, stirring us to action. Come, Holy Spirit, energize our lives to work for God. Let your wind of hope swirl around us, lifting and moving us from complacency. Come, Holy Spirit, pour your blessing on us. Let your presence challenge us to proclaim God's presence and love in everything we say and do. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. With you. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to remember, living things both small and great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O oh Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. 
And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When the day of Pentecost had come, the 50th day of Easter, the Holy Spirit blew in, and the community of Jesus' followers became the community we call the church. I like to think about Pentecost Sunday as an opportunity for us especially for us as Lutherans, to claim our Pentecostal roots. Think about it. We are a church born of Pentecost. And as long as we remain a Christ-centered, spirit-inspired community, as long as we are living our faith active in love, as long as we are using our spirit-given gifts for the common good, are we not Pentecostal? even as Lutherans. Now, it is true that the word Pentecostal comes with certain connotations and in most instances is associated with charismatic expressions, especially the gift of speaking in tongues. 
My own sense, though, of what it means to be a church of Pentecost, Pentecostal, if you will, is broader than that, much more related to what the Spirit makes possible as we see in the story of Pentecost from the book of Acts. As we heard, the story goes like this. On that day of Pentecost, they were all together, united in waiting, as Jesus had instructed. And suddenly, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. So yes, this speaking in other languages may be what people think about and know best about Pentecost, but there is so much more to this tale. The Spirit blew in, a crowd gathered, and people were bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Did you get that? The Spirit blew in, the Spirit blew open people's ears, and they could hear each other. Pentecost is as much a miracle of hearing as it is a miracle of speaking. By the power of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, communication and understanding are possible. And when communication is possible, community is possible. The Spirit blew in and the community we call the church was born. They were no longer Parthian or Mede, Mesopotamian or Arab, no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, but one in Christ. For anyone who has ever struggled with all the barriers that divide us, all those linguistic, cultural, partisan, racial, class, gender, denominational walls, What a word of grace and possibility Pentecost is. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. By the spirit, hearing one another, understanding, community are possible. When we recite the Nicene Creed, we say, We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. This spirit we are talking about today is the same spirit that hovered like a wind over the waters in the beginning and brought creation to life. This spirit is the very breath of God breathed into the dust of the earth at the dawn of time to bring forth human life. The risen Jesus breathed this same spirit into the fearful hearts of his disciples that first Easter night, and he said, peace be with you. This spirit, this wind, this breath of God creates, recreates, and sustains us for life. At Pentecost, that same spirit blew in with the power of a disruptive wind and filled Jesus' followers with new breath. Through the outpouring of the spirit, the disciples became what they had not yet been. They became witnesses of Jesus and his resurrection. In the power of the spirit, Peter was emboldened to tell others about Jesus And the Spirit changed Peter's hesitancy to certainty, his silence to speech, his fear to bold faith. The Spirit blew in with transforming power. Communication was possible. Understanding was possible. The proclamation of the good news was possible. Church was possible. The Spirit blows away barriers that divide and calls forth a community marked by love and grace. These possibilities are what it means to be Pentecostal. This is the heritage of Pentecost that we are called to claim for our own lives, for our church, and for ministry in a broken world. I have been thinking a lot and in new ways about the Holy Spirit 
and the implications of Pentecost this past week in light of the news from Minneapolis, land of many Lutherans, by the way, and home to many colleagues and friends who have been sharing their stories. If we understand the Spirit as the very breath of God, if we understand that the Spirit is the Lord and giver of life, then when one human being cries out, I can't breathe, because another man is kneeling on his neck, that is anti-spirit. Contrary to the life-giving, life-transforming, life-sustaining Holy Spirit, anti-spirit demeans human dignity and devalues human life. Anti-spirit deals in death and destruction. Anti-spirit, by its nature, sows seeds of confusion and chaos. And such anti-spirit unleashes demons of anarchy, violence, and destruction, as we have seen. This, contrary to a spirit from God that always builds up community and makes unity with diversity possible. The anti-spirit stirs up fear, closes down communication, hardens hearts, divides communities. For many reasons, George Floyd's inability to breathe unto death last week has become a tipping point for anti-spirit to overflow, to infect hearts, and to stir up rioting and looting and chaos. By its very nature, anti-spirit works to mask the deeper issues of inequality and discrimination at stake here, to drown out righteous cries for justice and truth, and to distort the struggle of dreams deferred. By stirring up violence, anti-spirit works to obscure the truth about the systemic racism at the heart of so much pain and suffering and the deaths of George Floyd, Ahmed Arbery, Breonna Taylor, Philando Castile, Tamar Rice, Walter Scott, Sandra Bland, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, and so many, many other black Americans. The tendency and temptation that I feel as a white woman, a tendency shared by many, to not want to talk about race, racial privilege, or racism is anti-spirit. Because closing our ears and hearts and minds to honest and difficult conversations is contrary to the transforming, communicating, community-building power of God's Holy Spirit. Saying that issues related to the death of a black man in another state don't have anything to do with me is anti-spirit because we are called to love our neighbors. And the simple truth is that our neighbors of color, our brothers and sisters of other languages, races, and faiths are suffering hatred, harassment, discrimination, big, bigotry, indignation, assaults, and death. And when we don't recognize this suffering, when we don't recognize this legacy of enslavement and racism and white supremacy at work in our nation, that too is anti-spirit. Anything that keeps us afraid, separated, silenced, unwilling or unable to listen, closed off to the pain and grief and weariness of others, is anti-spirit and decisively counter to the Holy Spirit of Pentecost, which opens ears to hearing, hearts to learning, minds to growing, communities to sharing God's love for all people. Sometimes this week in particular, it seems that the whole of creation is groaning under the death-dealing winds of anti-spirit and with the bitter power of sin in our lives. 
In these days, in a time of pandemic, when the world is short of breath, it is oh so clear how much we need the gift of God's Spirit, how much we need the Lord, the giver of life, how much we need God's breath of peace. In the last days, it will be, God declares, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your young men shall dream dreams. Pentecost reveals God's dream for a spirit-filled community where differences do not divide, where people can listen, hear, and understand one another, and where spirit-inspired faith and love bind us together in hope and truth. Many years ago, I read a description of Christian discipleship as living with the scripture in one hand and a newspaper in the other. You can update that to iPad in another. What I took from that description is that God's word and the needs of the world should always intersect and inform both my prayers and my way of living. This morning, today's scripture and today's news intersect. And this intersection summons us to prayer and to the hard work of following Jesus' ways in a broken and sin-stained world. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And the starting point is simple for Pentecost people. We start by expressing our need and by being bold to say, come, Holy Spirit, come. In all honesty, it is no light thing to pray for the Spirit to come because the Spirit blows with disruptive and transforming power where it wants, not where we want. But the good news is the Spirit always comes with power to open ears and hearts and with power to transform lives. The good news is that the Spirit is always blowing towards new life and new possibilities. A world divided by misunderstanding, old hatreds, violence and fears, needs the Holy Spirit to empower the testimony and witness of the body of Christ. A world marred and scarred by sin and anti-spirit needs God's spirit of life and love. For a time such as this, we who are many are one in Christ, called to share God's love for the sake of a hurting world. So, people of God, let's claim our Pentecostal heritage. Let's take a deep breath and pray with boldness. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Come, Holy Spirit, come, inspire us to dream God's dreams of a world filled with grace. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and give us wisdom to confront hard issues. Come, Holy Spirit, come, grant courage to bring the kingdom to life on earth as it is in heaven. Come, Holy Spirit, come, Breathe your peace into our fear and despair. Come, Holy Spirit, come and empower us to be your church. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Inspire us to be your people, sharing your light and your love with a world in need. Amen.
In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, and so we are bold to confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On that first Easter evening, Jesus came and stood among them and breathed peace into his disciples' fear. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also, and also with you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace on today. Peace be with you.
I am uh, metaphorically posting a love sign in gratitude for all the greetings of peace that, I share, that you have shared online, giving thanks for the gifts that you have shared in that way and in your offerings this past week. We join our hearts in a prayer of dedication for the gifts that have been shared. Let us pray. Gracious God, for all you have given us for the sustaining of our daily lives, for all the blessings we have received from your generous hand, for the many and varied gifts you have given by the Spirit for the common good, we give you thanks. We thank you for the faithful stewardship of your people at Zion, for unexpected blessings from friends and neighbors, and for these offerings received this week. May the gifts we have shared refresh and enliven our church and community as the wind of your spirit did long ago. May these offerings help us to bear witness to your love and your grace. May these gifts be blessed and multiplied for the sake of your kingdom. Amen. On this day of Pentecost, we unite in intercessory prayer, asking God to send the Holy Spirit on the church, the world, and all who are in need. The response to each petition is, come Holy Spirit, come. We pray for the church around the globe, for the faithful of many nations, languages, and lands, we pray for our own community of faith here at Zion and for everyone who searches for you. We pray, come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit come. Restore with your breath the whole creation, especially lands and waters polluted and the animals whose habitats are threatened. For the earth, we pray, Come, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. Send your spirit on the leaders of nations, on the leaders of our nation, on legislators, on judges, and local officials, that the people of the world will know your justice, your righteousness, and your peace. For the nations of the world, we pray, Come, come, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. Send your Spirit to transform hearts hardened with hate and bent to violence. Send your Spirit to grant peace and grace to those whose doors are locked and whose windows are shuttered in fear. Send your Spirit to breathe truth, accountability, and righteousness where injustice has triumphed. Give us wisdom and courage to address racism and to plant seeds of hope and reconciliation for a new day. For possibilities for change, we pray, come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. Visit all who are suffering, all who feel hopeless, all who are facing death. Grant your healing mercy to those we name before you, Miriam Snyder, Martha Maney, Alan Shaw, the family and friends of Mary Flowers, those on Zion's prayer list, and all whom we hold in our hearts. For all who are in need and for all who need breath, we pray. Come, come, Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. Restore to health those who have contracted COVID-19. Uphold health care workers. Grant jobs to those who are unemployed. Inspire researchers in the search for a vaccine. For all who are confronting coronavirus, we pray, come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. Bless those who are graduating from schools and universities, especially Mannheim Central graduates, Nick and Francesca. Give them and all young people your blessing and hope for the future. 
For our graduates, we pray, come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may all abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The God of all grace bless us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Send forth your spirit, O God, and renew the face of the earth. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.